Australian drag racing has faced some major challenges in recent years. The split between the traditional FIA-sanctioned governing body and the breakaway 400 Thunder Group has seen loyalties divided and a lesser quality of event for the sports legion of long-suffering fans. The man now tasked with the job of running drag racing down under is Grant Goodall, and we caught up with him at Calder Park during a break at the 51st Australian Drag Racing Nationals. Well, we're here in the bright sun of Calder Park for the Australian Drag Racing Nationals, the 51st running of that famous event. And we're here with the uh, CEO of the Australian National Drag Racing Association, Grant Goodall. And, and Grant, you are a relative newcomer in the, uh, in the position. Uh, tell us a bit about your background. How did you uh, end up uh, as CEO of Andra? Well, I'd moved back from Adelaide to uh, look at a business venture. My background, I've been a corporate CEO for 30 years in various organisations strong in sports administration. Um, I was made aware of the position and asked if I'd be interested in applying. I did, and um, just, just, just under a year ago. So in terms of your sporting background, what, what sports were you involved in? Uh, I was the CEO of the largest uh, Australian rules football competition in Australia, the South Australian Amateur League, and uh, I was chairman of Harness Racing South Australia and also on the National Harness Racing Board. Uh, among other things, sort of, they're the, they're the highlights of the sporting side of things. It's interesting you're coming back, coming with a bit of a football background. Your co compatriot at the Confederation of Australia Motorsport, Eugenia Rocker, um, also comes from a from a football background, yeah, Australian right. football background. Have you had a? Ch did you, you know, when you began, did you have a chance to have a chat with him and uh, pick his brains about the wonderful, weird and wonderful world of motorsport? Yeah, look, we've had a couple of chats, and uh, you're right, similar background. But yeah, probably a couple of months after I was in the role, we. We caught up and um, yeah, we touch base quite regularly and uh, obviously we're a member of CAMS and FIA and um, yeah, we're in touch on a number of issues. So what's your role as CEO of Andrew? What's your What are your responsibilities? Well, primarily I'm there to run the operations and the business really, so the boards put the strategies in place and work with us on those, but primarily um, I run the business with the team there. Uh, we've obviously got the integrity side, the marketing side the administrative side, so the actual running and the business running of Andrew is my responsibility. So what have you discovered? I mean, did you know much about drag racing before you started? No, very little. I'd been to events, but, uh, you know, I'm a drag racing novelist, really. I was employed more for my business skills and the fact that I've got sports administration. I think the thing that struck me when I came into the sport is that a lot of the issues in, you know, we find ourselves in in uh, drag racing are very similar to a lot of other sporting uh, areas, there's always issues, and particularly membership based and the passion involved in sports. Uh, it's surprisingly how similar a lot of issues are. So, uh, look, I, I certainly um, walked into a challenge. It's a challenging time for drag racing. You mentioned the challenging time, I and mean, we're here at the Nationals. The Nationals, the big go, 51 years. Um, back in the back in the, the the golden days, we'd have 35, 40 thousand people out here. All of the the pits would be absolutely you know, filled to capacity. There's a bit of a, a schism in the sport at the moment. Um, what is the state of drag racing in Australia at the moment, as you see it? Oh, look, I, I think uh, drag racing is on the improve. I think those days can be had again not at the moment so we're in a rebuild phase I mean you know with there's been a lot of disruption and, um, involved in the sport that's been well commentated on so uh, I think there's definitely upside involved in the sport I mean the the crowd here today and yesterday is uh, very good um, not to those sort of numbers that you mentioned but I think those days can come back and I think you know certainly the owners of the the track here I, th I know are interested in uh, um, putting more back into the venue, I think improving the venue and if we can continue to improve the sport and the participation uh, we can build and get those numbers back uh, but that's a long term goal. With the current situation with the uh, group uh, Thunder 400 as they're calling themselves, I mean what is, what is, what's at the basis, what's at the heart of all of that, why have they moved off, what is it that they want that they don't believe that you can give? Well that's a question for them I guess um, you know I think the the move for 400 Thunder and uh, the other sanctioning authority really was uh, the strategies were put in place well before I got into place. I think there there was frustration in the sport, so you know I think that's a question for them. But look, we've got a number of people that run events in uh, drag racing. I think the key and look, the board met yesterday, and uh, our key focus at the moment is to 
try and engage with 400 Thunder leadership and uh, really anyone racing drag racing events. There's a number that uh, do operate under and already. So we've made it quite clear to 400 Thunder that we're more than happy to sanction their events and we're more than happy to discuss getting them involved in um, in one series because what, what we hear from the drivers we've uh, very strongly is that the majority of people would like to see one series they don't like this split series scenario so 400 Thunder uh, run an event um, look there's no reason why we can't get parties together and perhaps discuss how we can at least bring them in under one series umbrella that's what the industry would like and the board yesterday have certainly uh, briefed the management in terms of putting some modelling up. We'll consult the industry and then uh, try and put those models forward and see if we can't get uh, a one series approach in the sport again. One thing that I find that is, tends to be a bit different with motorsport than a lot of other sports that, that I've been involved with over the years is at the top level you've got the, the focus here is very much seems to be on the competitors whereas when you talk to people from the AFL, from Cricket Australia, uh, Tennis Australia, those sorts of organisations, the focus is very heavily on the fans. How do you weigh that, how do you weigh that up? I mean, how do you weigh up the, the needs of the, putting on a show that the public want to see and also meeting the needs of your members? Well, there's multiple stakeholders in any sport. Um, there's spectators and participants and there's venues as well. Um, and uh, caterers and fuel suppliers and, you know, there's multiple layers. You've got to get the balance right. But uh, you mentioned the word show. To me, um, elite levels of sports such as uh, drag racing, it's all about putting on a good show. If you put on a good show, people attend. Good crowd here today and yesterday. And, you know, we are seeing some big numbers at events again um, over the summer period right around Australia. Um, you get the show right, you get the product right, and the crowd will come. One thing that's very different about this particular event uh, this time, as compared with the traditional event, is that it's essentially a daylight come twilight uh, meeting. What was the reason, what's the reason for that? Well, the promoters, um, you know, we don't, we don't run the actual event, so we're the sanctioning authority, so it's probably a question really for Pete, um, he's the promoter of the event, uh, but, you know, the answer he would give you is that this is, this is the, uh, the time period that's required with the number of cars, so it's the logistics really of um, getting through the number of vehicles and putting on a, a good competition, uh, that would dictate a lot of the timing. Long term, where do you want to see the sport in, say, five years' time? United, stronger, bigger crowds attending, uh, bigger participation. And I think with the strategic plan we have in place, we can achieve that. But, um, you know, getting one series, getting everyone around the table and, and focusing on one series, that's what the drivers want. Uh, we get the drivers into better space, um, the promoters into better space, the crowds will come. Uh, you know, the venue, venues are an integral part of that as well. So. Um, you know, it's about our role, I guess, in a leadership role of talking to all those people and making sure we move the sport ahead. Well, it's, it's great to see the Nationals back at Calder Park. We've had a dearth of drag racing in Victoria for a long, long time now. Um, hopefully in years to come we will see some improvements out here and the sport will just uh, go hopefully get back to the, the grand old days of old. I don't think there's any, any doubt. You know, the quality of this sport, it's, it's, it's the greatest motor racing sport uh, show in Australia. Um, you know, the crowds love it to see the top fuel and all the categories race. It's a, it's a racing spectacle that I think uh, is very appealing for fans and I think those numbers will come back in future years. Well, good luck with it and for now, Grant Goodall, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks for your time.